four Midwest guys presents. People have heard the stories. They've read the articles. But they've never seen Marvel DC King. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to 4 Midwest Guys Presents Marvel DC Kings. That's right, we are back with Episode 6, Season 2, Episode 6, and with me today to help me out with that is my brother Aaron. Hey, how's it going, man? How's it going, dude? It's all right. Good, good. Yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, absent is the show's normal host, uh, Mr. Brian Aikenbauer, could not be with us tonight. He is uh, uh, working some overtime, mandatory overtime, yeah. forced overtime, gotta hate those kind of jobs. Yeah, warehouse jobs really love that sort of shit. Yeah, yeah, it sucks. <laughs> but we uh, shout out to him, and uh, we wish him well, and uh, we know uh, he'll hopefully be back uh, next time with us here on Marvel DC Kings. Um, so uh, what we're going to do, in case you have never listened to this podcast before, uh, we go through uh, the TV shows, mostly DC. There is one Marvel TV show out there. Um, and uh, we go over all of the episodes, or we try to, or at least the ones that we want, that we like. And then we go into like some movie news as well. Yeah, overall. we don't really cover Powerless or Riverdale because, well... Uh, well, Riverdale is, is Archie Comics, so yeah. I don't consider that... It's a Real. comic show. I don't but, really consider that comic. But it's, it's kind what, of teen and, melodrama sort of thing. Yeah, I, I and really... And if interested. we're being honest, Powerless, like in the first couple of episodes, we, we kind of talked about it a little, but it, it's it's pretty shitty so far. Yeah, they really got to figure out what they want to do with that show. That, like it, that, it has to be more than Better Off Ted. I... Actually, if it was on Better Off Ted quality, it might be fine. I was going to say, there, I don't even think it's at Better Off Ted quality yet. Um, but anyway... So we digress, but yes, powerless needs help. It needs work, yeah. um, and until I think it gets to a certain level of quality, I don't think we're going to review it because I think all we would do is bash it. And well, it, it could be pieces. a fun little part of this segment of the show. Just here's the part of the show where we just talk so much shit about powerless. <laughs> 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 we'll talk about that, I guess. We could do that. Who That's tried to be community again this week? Yeah. Powerless. Powerless. <laughs> Who failed again this week? Powerless. Powerless. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway. All right, so let's talk some TV shows. Let's talk The Flash. Um, last, we're going to do this week. At, well, really, we're doing two weeks worth where we have it. Some are on hiatus by the second week. But last week, we had the Untouchables episode. That's where Flash goes after the metahuman who can decompose matter at a touch. Um, kind of an interesting episode, Aaron. I, I was uh, it was Barry trying to uh, get Kid Flash to do all mm. the work. I guess essentially he keeps trying to train him. He's trying yeah, to get trying him out to phase. He's trying to train him to actually help save Iris in the future because he thinks he can actually you know speed up faster than he can. And there's some evidence of that and i think even in the comics that actually does end up being true that he is a little faster than barry is but um it's an interesting episode but i found the villain really weak on this episode like don't wrong the power is kind of interesting but yeah. like besides that it doesn't he's not really an interesting character that much well you know that 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 happens quite a bit on the flash uh, outside of like um zoom and outside of the major villains for, mm. for the the season like uh the best one is Reverse Flash, in my opinion. To this yeah. day, I still love that. that yeah, whole. I think that's probably been the best one. Because after that, you kind of have kind of variants of just speedsters that never really have that same sort of like personal touch to it. Yeah. Like, whereas Reverse Flash went back in time, killed Barry's mother, kind of created Barry, and then spent years training him to, to be the Flash. To make him the, the, the yeah, Flash. Yeah, like, there's a pretty heavy personal vendetta thing going on there definitely yeah and whereas once you get to zoom it you don't really have that to the same extent and but you know with these so but with the one-off villains usually they're pretty static there, there's really there's been a couple that i think have done pretty well like i liked uh hamill's trickster even though by the time you see him the second time like he really is just the Joker yeah, in the that, Flash universe. Yeah, when they go to the alternate earth and with the alternate trickster or i guess was it earth 2 or earth I one think of was, the other Earths. 
Yeah, he's very close to being just the Joker. I mean, yeah, he had a purple, like a dark purple suit, and yeah, a light purple. Suit. It was pretty in the voice. Mm. It's pretty close. Yeah, like because he's essentially still doing the same sort of character. Like he's toned it down a little, but not, not a whole a lot. lot. No, I mean he's just he was all all he was really missing was the laugh. Oh in yeah, that episode like that and little face paint, little green yeah, hair. Right. Like yeah, he, he was so close, but not quite. Yeah, it would. Don't get me wrong, I loved every second yeah. of it because I love Hamill as the Joker. I think yeah, he may uh, be the best Joker. Period. Yeah, and uh, I mean I think you uh, look at Pied Piper. I think that was kind of a smaller but kind of still interesting character. Okay, yeah, I'll give um, you that. And even with um, Alchemy, I thought that was kind of interesting. Well, Alchemy's part of the bigger picture. He's part of uh, Savitar. He works mm. with Savitar, so he's... Well, yeah, it's just interesting a... because I actually find Alchemy more interesting than Savitar himself. Well, right now, yeah. <laughs> because Savitar much... is just this gigantic, like, speed deity thing. What well, you, know, you know what Savitar... He reminds me of... He, he's like, they took Iron Man and made him into a speedster. That's... <laughs> In, you know, well, it's like his they, Hulkbuster costume. Yeah, of, or, and or they armor. gave him and they gave him Wolverine's claws. So it, it was like they took a couple of superheroes and yeah. smashed them together. Um, but but yeah, so yeah, there wasn't much to the villain. In yeah, this one. Uh, it's just interesting because you kind of look at like Alchemy and like you actually see like him just creating like different supervillains. Like that's kind of a cool little thing. And yeah, I don't know. Or um, even if you look at um, the alternate version of. Um, vibe like I think that was kind of a cool villain yeah the evil version of himself yeah yeah I forget what he called himself he, he wasn't vibe he was yeah it was else. something different but it was but, close to it but yeah but yeah so but yeah the, the, there wasn't much to the villain but this was almost by the time we got to the end of the episode when Barry kind of sits down and, and tells him how he's going to train him. I felt like I was watching Star Wars Rebels again or something. It was, or that it was like a Yoda moment. Like it had sort that of, sort like, of like, there. I clearly have, I had a lot of good teachers going for me, but yeah. I clearly need to work on being a better teacher for you sort of thing. Precisely. It was like, it was, well, it whole, was a growing moment for him. Right. Yeah. But it was that whole, it was very much that whole there do or do not. There is no try. It, it yeah. was, it was a complete, it was, wasn't said that way. But basically, that's what Barry was saying. He said, I was let, "I've been letting you get slide by with your natural talent, but I really haven't been training you." Yeah, you know, and I've well, I mean, know. you look at early on in the episode, and he's just like, "Here's how I do it, go." Yeah, and I, and that's not really that efficient a training for like describing how like a sensation should feel, sort of thing, because that's a very subjective sort of thing, right? And Barry, but Barry goes on, and he goes, you know, he, he almost says like he's a he says he was afraid like how he was going to fail mm. in training him. And that, again, it was just like, wow, okay, well, I've seen this before. Yeah. This well, is Kanan and Ezra. If for those who've seen rebels all over again, it's, it, I feel like it, it has a similar motifs it. because you yeah. do have the training yeah. sort of like thing and like moving on from not only being here, but like a teacher sort of. Right. So there are definitely similarities you can kind of draw upon. I think so. But I think that's something true with general, like, comic books and science fiction is, like, I think we really do reinterpret a lot of classical mythology and Mm -hmm. kind of a lot of classical storytelling through it. So it's understandable you're going to see certain themes and elements kind of reappear occasionally. Reshow themselves, yeah. Uh, It was interesting, though, because I wonder if Barry is going to come to any kind of realization that, um, that, you know, he wasn't fast enough to save her this time. So will he continue to go all along with his theory of training him because he's eventually going to be faster because mm. you know, he's already failed once technically yeah well know, i mean he's her. seen the future self of him fail a few times right um i guess it's actually like two or three times at this point oh uh, because well twice they vibed yeah. into the future, future yeah. yeah which i i don't understand why they don't i think i brought this up last time like why is that not just a weekly update yeah why don't you just keep going back okay what do we do this time okay well this has changed well let's see how this affected it right are we good we're good okay okay you know you can do the whole trial and error thing yeah right like you just do it like all right if i move a rock here (laughs) in this spot will (laughs) sabotar just trip and fall on his face (laughs) honestly I think they're going to run out of timeline stories with time and space at some point, and eventually you're just going to see him start doing the Wild Stallions thing with time and space. <laughs> just going <laughs> just full Bill and Ted. A garbage can. I need a garbage can right now. And a garbage can just falls out on falls on top of him. That's what yeah, you're going to end up I with. I mean, you could do that, but I, I, I don't <laughs> think that would work for the style of the show. I really think they're gonna, eventually they're going to run out of ideas. Well, I think at that point you just... <laughs> Like the writers just like fuck it, let's just do a Bill and Ted show. Like at that point, 
<laughs> Even though I heard there was rumors of them doing like a third film, but apparently it's happening. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I've heard, I, I don't really know about. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, it, it sounds funny. I'd be interested to see where it goes. But they say uh, what's his Keanu Reeves is starting to grow his hair back out to try to be really? similar, something similar to. Whatever. Well, I mean, it's already kind of out there normally for like John Wick and stuff like that. Right. So, so, so it, it would really be wouldn't much, have to be that much. Much. Yeah. So yeah, we could very well see a mid. I don't know if I want to see it, but we could see that uh, like just middle middle-aged age, Bill and Bill Ted. Ted. Well, it kind of hints at it at the end of the uh, second one, doesn't it? Uh, or is it the end of the first? The end of the second one, they they try to make them into the rock gods that they yeah, like, but they're like yeah. all middle aged and they have like their kids and shit. Well, they got like beards; they're not yeah. really middle aged, but yeah, I guess you could build off that. I, I, <laughs> I don't know. I didn't like the second one. I liked the first. Really, one. dude? Yeah. The second one's actually better. No. Oh, it no, is. No, no, I, I have to disagree. No, like just going I mean, through like their personal versions of hell. That was so much the, fun. Death was okay. But beyond death, I really, really didn't. I the only thing I think you can't really do is George Carlin's bit. Like that clearly can't come up because Carlin died, and well, I don't know. It's don't know. like it was too well done a character. I think I don't know. Well, this unfortunately is not a Bill and Ted podcast. No, no, so. but like we're just going to have the occasional tangents. So, yeah, but back on it, we have the uh, little bit where the villain of this episode actually does kind of like infect. Iris's arm. Mm-hmm. So you actually have uh, snow kind of just like freezing yes. like thing to kind of she, s- slow down the spread of it. She actually takes off her necklace and becomes Killer Frost for well, a kind of. Kind of. She has to fight off the evil. Yeah, the like she side. has to kind of, you know, control it, contain it, have. Yeah. And even like her power, she has to have kind of right on the dot in terms of controlling it. Otherwise, she's just more or less just freezing off the arm. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, I mean. Iris might look all right with a prosthetic. You could have done that route, too, I guess. <laughs> Cut off her arm now. We'll give her a bionic one. That'll be her power. <laughs> all of a sudden, you're just like, shit, went too hard. It'd be like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. She'll have the, it'll be like uh, Coulson. He'll have, she'll have oh, the uh, robot Is that how arm. that went now? Yeah, he has a robot arm. Now. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was not aware of that. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. I'd, spoiler alert, but yeah. Oh, no, it's yeah. fine. I just... I haven't seen that show for a bit. <laughs> well, I will talk about it here in a little bit. But. I know, but I thought that actually had some pretty decent scenes for oh, yeah, this that. episode. Like, I think the Killer Frost arc, like, her trying to maintain and control, and, like, I think that's actually been one of the better, like, subplots for this season. I'm not, I'm enjoying it. I just don't know if I like her pairing up with Douchebag from, <laughs> um, from Harry Potter. Um, well. He, he just, he, I don't like It him. is trying to make him more human and less of just... Generic asshole. I know. I just yeah. So far, I really don't like that character. There's yeah. not much about him. I know why he's there because he's part of the villain. Yeah. But oh, God, he just he annoys me. Yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about the current version of Wells. If it's any consolation, I don't like that. Don't like him either. It's like they they're trying to take the intelligence of the Wells and give it to that guy, to the yeah. Harry Potter guy, and now they're trying to introduce this other. I don't know what the hell to call it, HR, whatever yeah. he is. Um, but yeah, I'm not really enjoying that that much. I don't know, like, no more, like, it's interesting in its own way, but it's just, it doesn't have the same sort of, like, feeling like the previous versions have. Like, I think they should give him some sort of underlying plot, I think, in order to make him more interesting. Yeah. You know, something like yeah, he's hiding from everybody else or something, because otherwise, he's just boring. HR is boring to me, really. He's yeah. supposed to be comic relief, and... I don't know, but I mean, yeah. you kind of had that with Cisco, like to a certain extent, in a lot of the episodes. And don't get me wrong, like I know, like with Snow and Iris and some of the other characters, you're taking the more serious arcs. So I can understand wanting to have that sort of counterbalance because you don't have Cisco as comic relief to the same extent. Yeah, but at the same time, like I'm not sure if you transitioning one of your more like darker, more interesting character or more intelligent characters for just plain comic relief is the way to go with that. Well, I, I don't know if they're going to make him smart or something, but at some point, I mean, Caitlin's going to go full-on bad guy, at least temporarily. So Well, I mean, she's have... already had bits where she's gone, yeah. like, villain temporarily. Right. And so. to be honest, I was amazed we, they didn't do that with Vibe, to be honest. Like, especially after, like, you have that kind of uh, his, flashpoint change where, his like, brother. his brother died. Yeah. Like, where you really could have seen them just kind of transitioning and, like, going dark and, like, being villains. Have him go, like, down the Batman path or something. Or yeah. Something more. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I'm kind of glad it didn't go that route, but it could have easily done it. Yeah, that's true. Um, all right. So, overall, uh, just real quick, uh, 
say A, B, C, D. Uh, B minus. B minus. It was all right. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Go it ahead. wasn't like a great villain. It was kind of a story arc that took you to next week, but I don't know if there's anything that really stands out on it too much. Yeah. I, there wasn't, there's not, nothing, nothing terribly earth shattering about this episode, but uh, I thought it was cool. I'll give it a solid B. I, I won't say B plus, I won't say B minus, just solid B. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's a good episode. It's yeah. entertaining. Um, there is uh, this week. There was no episode. Uh, they are returning next week uh, on the twenty first of uh, February, and then they're going to do the Gorilla Garad. Uh, is that going to be episodes. a two episode bit? I think so. Yeah, I believe it's a two episode. Because that should be kind of cool. Yeah, like Garad's kind of an interesting character. I mean, you kind of have that nice, like, like intelligent brute sort of thing because he isn't gorilla. Yeah, um, and I mean that might it plays into like a more multi dimensional storyline rather than just the time jumps it might allow us to actually do more with wells or this version of wells possibly because they've mentioned that he's had like intelligent gorillas on their planet as well so i think so yeah but they're gonna go to earth two this time Mm. so we'll see see how that pans out so we'll actually have three speedsters you'll have jesse quick yeah kid flash and the flash yeah it'll be interesting interesting to see how that works out because you really haven't done a whole lot with jesse quick not, like since they introduced her as a character, not, so not really. So, be interesting to see. I think it'd be pretty cool to see all three of them together mm. for the. Well, then I mean, just having like a Earth Jump sort of episode can be kind of fun. Okay. Oh yeah, because you can have a lot of fun with that. Yeah. You, know, you have all kinds of weird things going. Yeah, on. Yeah. Like, don't be wrong. You're not going to go Rick and Morty weird, but no. But you can little quirky things. Yeah. You know? Have you ever caught any of those episodes? No, I'm not. They're they're pretty good. Are they? Yeah. Like it's 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 an appropriate for Adult Swim. <laughs> like, I would not let your daughter watch well, Yeah, there's a lot of things I wouldn't let my daughter watch. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, but if you have the time, it's a it's a pretty fun Back to the Future parody. <laughs> All right. Like, unofficial Back to the Future parody. But Gotcha. I'll have to check it out. All right, so let's move on to Legends of Tomorrow. Um, two weeks ago, we had the episode Turncoat. Um, the Legends travel to the winter of 1776 to protect George Washington from... Uh, from being assassinated, who just happens to be Trip. Trip is the one who's who's turned bad guy. The Legion of Doom, yeah, <laughs> has taken Rip's mem or not Trip Rip's memories. Yeah, Rip Hunter, and uh, they've turned him evil. And he yeah. plays a pretty damn good bad guy. He plays a good asshole. Anyway, he kind of does. And it's interesting because even though you know, like his memories are turned, like it actually almost provides like a narrative for why the new like version of Rip has like motivation. Yeah. Because it's just like, well, I protected, you know, history, and I watched my wife and child die for it. Mm-hmm. So why would I want to preserve that? Right. It's like, oh, no, it's just, that actually makes sense. Yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> good for you, man. And he, he really does. He, he I don't know if it's because he's British, because British plays really good bad guys in movies. I, I don't know what it is. I don't know. I, I Star feel like... Wars effect kicking in or something, but I really like him as a bad guy. I hope they don't turn him back to good, honestly. I, yeah, yeah, like you like him that much. I like him as a bad guy. I really I don't know. do. I feel like movies do worse with Germans in terms of being the villains. You like... Germans and Russians. You like you think it's worse or, or better? No, no. I just feel like feel, I think Rip actually does work a little better as a villain, yeah. Especially in comparison to him just being like a director sort of thing, which was yeah. stupid, right? Like, don't wrong. It makes sense in the plot line, but it's it's not the most interesting story arc for him. Well, I like it because he was their mentor, yeah. And he now he knows everything about him. He knows everything about that ship. Mm. He can tear them to pieces. He's oh, yeah. a big it works, threat. It works really well, especially when you see that why he set the trap the way he did Mm -hmm. like how you see him like later on the episode just kind of um was it is it Jax the one that's the engineer uh yes yeah you see him just kind of like chasing him around the ship and be like i've taught you everything on this ship you know and you see like this kind of chase scene where like he's trying to like deal with like the numbers difference and it works really well and he almost breaks jacks i mean he almost yeah because you see him him just wanting to like still believe in him because he did teach him everything because he did you know support him and and yeah i mean you have i can't think of her name just get like almost killed twice because of sarah yeah yeah it maybe that's why i like him so much because he's He's Darth Vader now. He's the, he's 
<laughs> he was Anakin Skywalker, and now he's Darth Vader. I, I don't know, know if I would take it to that extent. Well, and in some ways, because he's, like I said, he's he was the... He was the, the mentor good guy the, yeah, the, who turned evil. The ultimate, I think yeah. that only works if you really include like the Clone Wars stuff of like Ahsoka. Well, like, sure, or it would be better like, if he ate, turned slow. I, the way he turned is obviously he's been manipulated. Yeah, like, but... They're Still, probably going to turn him back. I think they are too. But like, don't get me wrong. I agree with you. I think he works good as a villain. I actually think he looks. He works more interesting as a villain. I would. You know what? I, I would love him to stay the villain. And also, would, because the Legion of Doom really doesn't have a whole lot of interesting members. No, if that, we're being that, honest. And that's the other part. I'd rather him drop the other three. Uh, other than maybe Reverse Flash, I still like him. Yeah. But the other two. I could take it. Like, don't get me wrong. If you're okay, wanted, but. Yeah. Like, as someone who is not really big in the original Arrow series, like, they're both, like, leagues of assassin villains. Like, so, like, one of them I kind of see the point of. And the other one's just. I, I don't know if you need both. Because they both seem to be playing a very similar role. I don't think you do. I don't think you need. Like, either And one to be of honest, them, really. like, if you were having this in any of the animated series, these would be more henchmen. Yes, and, and they they kind of go with that theme in this episode too, or well, not pre- just this episode, or previous but, episode. Yeah, in a previous episode, that's like, no, we're not henchmen. You're not going to treat us like that. And yeah. It's like, yeah, I understand why you have to do that episode because in any other form of the series, they would be right. At least in the Legion of Doom level, like they keep calling them that. But if you look at what it's like, three dudes and <laughs> none of them are re- like outside of Reverse Flash. None of them are particularly super powered or. None of them are Lex Luthor level like intelligences. No, no, not even close. And, and they're like you said, they're practically the same thing. They're both League of Assassin former. You know, yeah, super and don't get me wrong. Clearly, kind of the, one's more tactful than the other. Right. But that just ha- means they have different approaches to it. And don't get me wrong. I like the last episode where they are fighting, where they actually do trap you know Reverse Flash and get him to admit. You know, like we're standing on the same page here. Right. That's a good fucking episode. It is. Right. But. In terms of dealing with the other cast members, it's not really the most interesting dynamic. Yeah, I, I just, I really, like I said, I I think he would be the better arch villain for them. Because, I, like I said, he knows everything about him. Yeah. If, they, if he becomes the arch, let's just say the Legion of Doom thing runs its course this season. Yeah. I would love to see Rip go on and be the villain in the next in season the yeah next like season. actually constantly trying to disrupt time flow yeah, trying to cuz he understands rewrite reality he understands the timeline he understands how yeah. to manipulate you know it, to me he's the better villain and, yeah in a lot of ways like he works in a much better way for what the show is than for mm-hmm. reverse flash yep. who makes sense a little bit yeah like i actually think his origins are real as to why he's doing everything is interesting but like, outside of that, I don't view him as, like, a great villain for the show. Like, he works because he can kind of jump through time a little, but... Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I think you're right. I think he'd be a much better villain going forward. Yeah. Or at least having a character very similar to him. If it's something similar. Well, not really. He's really it. I mean, because yeah. he was the leader. Yeah. And he, like I said, he knows them all. It's He's just perfect. Well, then we have had the time bounty hunters in the last episode. Season two, uh, and they okay. didn't really work that well either. Yeah, so I mean, you have a fair point. Yeah, I, I think he's. I just think he's a perfect fit. I, like yeah. I said, I think they're going the other way with him eventually. But nevertheless, if you were going to keep put him on the show permanently, like a mm. lot of people want him back. Yeah, I think he'd be great as the villain. Yeah, so. I think you're right. Um, this show also had a couple other arcs. Uh, you have the Steel and Vixen thing. Mm, which yeah, was, like, that was the interesting. Love yeah, I it was a weird sort of like love moment in a show that. Hasn't been too bad about it since this season, but like... Usually they hint about that kind of stuff in other episodes. There really hasn't been too much foreshadowing of this. This just kind of happens. It was just kind of like, well, in my time front, or in my timeline, it's just, you know, you're more liberal about this sort of thing, you know? You're people who just get on a little more, but to be honest, I think that's historically a little dishonest, but... Well, not only that, but they're, I, I mean, just the, the overall idea of putting those two together, mm. usually they kind of build towards that. Yeah. And, the, well, it kind of sets this up as just like it was a fling sort of thing, even though there might be lingering attachments. Right. And, like, I don't know, like, it might work out, but it seems kind of forced in some yeah. way. Like, you kind of, like, the love plots on the show really don't pan out real well, and they kind of seem a bit much well, sometimes. The, yeah. And, like I said, it just seemed like it was like, okay. Yeah. You know, they they did a good job in the episode building up to it, but in other usually they spend a couple episodes, yeah, 
working your way up to that. But in this case, it's kind of like, bam, now we're going to deal with. Yeah. Thing happens, deal with it. Right. Let's keep going. Yeah. So. I mean, that's not necessarily a bad way of doing it. Like, you don't want to foreshadow every damn thing you want to do. But mm-hmm. I don't know. It just seemed like an odd moment in its own way. But I don't think it's nearly as odd as the actual scenes with George Washington and. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, God. Uh, um, um, I'm, I'm completely blanking out the here. Fire starter. Fire, yeah, not fire. Oh, God. What's his name? <laughs> Anyway, it shows how much we pay attention to the show. Well, I, I do pay attention. I actually am. Get, I'm actually liking this show more and more. The more it's I watch doing it. a lot better than the first season did. It, it, yeah, leaps and bounds. Um, but yeah, that was kind of yeah. yeah that was the and, worst part of this episode. Him in Washington and how he teaches Washington to be a rogue and not only that's like quite I'm dirty a, and, and you have that like speech towards warfare. the end like no, this is the American way. You don't give up. You don't surrender. You fight dirty. You kick him the balls. Yeah, it was <laughs> it was funny. I, I found it funny. I don't. It's I didn't amusing take it in its own way, but like, and he's like, then he has his own statue. Yeah, like, a statue with his face. I was like, okay, and it, all right. They, and that's they, a bit of a comic relief. But like, I thought that was like the part of the episode that really just fucking dragged. Yeah, Dad yeah, didn't do a whole lot. It was, <coughs> I don't know. I wouldn't even call it fan service. I think they were just trying to figure out a way to use yeah. his character in the episode somewhere. Yeah. You know, everybody else kind of had their own thing going on and, you know, so put him with Washington, so. I don't know, like, but, for me it was just a low point. Like, I understand what it was what me trying to do. It was kind of comic relief in its own way. Yeah. But, I don't know, it just, it wasn't a part of the episode that just worked for me, so. Yeah. So. All right. Uh, overall, uh, what do you think, grade wise, on that one? C C plus. C C plus. I actually give it a B minus. I enjoyed it yeah. a little bit. I re- like I said, really like it. Rip is the villain. So yeah, that's fair. Uh, this week they didn't have an episode as well. They will return as well on the twenty first. They're going back to Camelot um, time, so we'll get to see like a Ren Fair version of the show or a Monty Python version of the show. <laughs> uh, it's Camelot. <laughs> I fought in your general direction. <laughs> your I don't know. Father I mean, was a hamster, and your mother. I know, like I, Camelot makes sense for a place for this show to kind of go to, but I'm not sure how much I'm going to like it. Just because I really wasn't big on the uh, feudal Japan episode either. To be oh, honest. really? I actually kind of enjoyed that yeah. one. It was a little too short. I would expect. I actually wanted to spend more time there. I don't know. Like I thought that episode was kind of weak too. So I don't yeah. know. Okay, it, it could go either way. We'll see. Hopefully, it'll be good. All right, so let's move on to Supergirl. Um, two weeks ago, we did the Martian Chronicles. Armic arrives in National City to take on Megan to, uh, to back to Mars to face her punishment as a traitor. Um, this was apparently also her um, ex-husband in a way, I guess, Martian, white Martian, that came back to bring her back to face Oh, okay, Trial. so, like, was that a legal process where he was the ex-husband, or was it just, like, she took off and just, there's, like, a common law split? It was more of a, they kind of have arranged marriages, was kind of how it felt. Oh, is that and, how it kind of works out? And Yeah, they... I don't I, know, I didn't really pick up on them, like, suggesting too much of Martian culture there. Like, yeah, the only bo- bit. bit you really see are just, like, the deaf camp sort of thing, so... Yeah, and, and you know, she has that big flashback i think that was a previous episode yeah it was a previous episode but um yeah so he comes back and basically tries to you know to grab her and bring her forcefully bring her back eventually back to mars to face trial because she helped the green martians and Mm. blah 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 Um, you really think wouldn't think you'd be that worried about one person that like helped like one or two people escape and then left just more or less sent themselves into exile. Yeah, I, this kind of felt like uh, an episode where they were trying to save money on the budget and they decided to trap, you know, do the whole, we're going to trap you in a building and you have to run around and you you don't know who's who because the White yeah. Martian is pretending a to be shapeshifter. Somebody, a shapeshifter. It's like uh, going through the thing sort yeah, of process. Kind of, yeah. I, it, I There's kinda, a few homages to, like, that film in the last couple of years, like, in shows. Like, you see it, like, pop up in a few different places. I actually... Like, I, you even see it in an episode of Rebels, if we're being honest. It, it's true. It's true. It, it, you're absolutely right. It's just... I, the the show was... This episode, for me, was kind of filler. I don't know. I kinda, yeah. it, there wasn't much that went on other than what, at the end where Megan decides she needs to go back to Mars for some reason after all this and start a white 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 uh martian resistance um 
I don't know. Like, don't know. it doesn't really go into the government structure of Mars, so... I, it just... Like, if you're having death camps and, like, parallels to World War II, like, Nazi Germany, I would assume it's a bit of a dictatorship. Oh, yeah, I would say so, because uh, he even, her ex-husband, or whatever the hell he is, he even mentions Mar- how, Mar- how great Mar- is, Mars is now that they've eradicated the green martians and they've created their own superior martian race and all this shit it it goes full just they might as well just put nazi (laughs) you know (laughs) hats on yeah to be honest like i mean it'd be a little less subtle but that's clearly what it's yeah that's exactly what it's going for um again i i don't know like i said there just wasn't much of this episode um they play around a little bit with supergirl and with uh, mon yeah well they've bit. been doing that oh, for a while yeah. and to be honest like it's been kind of dragging yeah. especially because mon is not that interesting a character yeah it, it's it's really you know it was, it was i think this episode was trying to be uh really heavy on on john and, and megan and it just mm. i don't know it fell flat for me yeah, i really fair enough man um i don't know i think there's been a couple of superhero episodes where like like the pacing or the focus seems a little off and the episode does seem kind of tend to fall. Like we've seen that a few times this season. It was much worse last season, but yeah, like this is a show that's definitely done better uh, under the CW than did. Uh, don't get me wrong. This episode compared to last season is, is already in another category oh, yeah. above what last season was. But, uh, but yeah, as far as the overall story arc and stuff, I, there wasn't much there. Um, yeah. Uh, in fact, I'll go ahead and give put my grade out there on this one because there's not nothing else to talk about. I'll say C minus. Yeah, so. that that's fair. Um, yeah. There really wasn't a whole lot to it, so yeah. That I think we're good moving on to the next one. Okay. So uh, this week's because I think yeah the next or the current weeks is actually much much better. Yeah, this week's episode was uh, Luther the Luthers. Um, Lena is arrested for helping break Metallo and Lillian Luther out of prison. Um, and Supergirl has to, or Kara refuses to believe that her friend Lena has committed this crime. And, yeah, so she's and, kind of vouching for her and believing her and yeah. fighting for her. And I think, not only do I really love like the Luther backstory here, where you actually see that where she's, you know, like, from like an affair that her father had and mm-hmm. was kind of adopted into the family yep. uh, to her relationship with her mother and brother were all pretty interesting bits. But like, I think it's interesting looking at the parallels between Kara and um, Lana Luther here. Yes. Cause you look at last season where Kara was pretty much fighting a, a similar maternal figure in her aunt who she really wanted to believe in, who she really wanted to support and who she couldn't because of what she wanted to do. Yeah. And I think, you know, I think that's why the friendship kind of works is because they can see parallels in each other almost, or at least from Kara's point of view, they can. Yeah. I, and, and honestly, I really like this episode because it, it did go really deep into the Luthers mm. and, um, you know, especially after Smallville and, and watching that, that, that whole thing, uh, and how they did the Luthers there. I'm always, I, I it really got me interested into the Lex Luthor character mm. that Smallville did. So even though like the Lex Luthor character here looks very much like the uh, main character from Gotham, <laughs> it's very similar. What do you mean? Like uh... Uh, their version of Lex Luthor looks very similar to Gotham's Bruce Wayne. Like physically. oh, the the kid, yes. yeah, the the kid version of Lex Luthor. Yes. Yeah, they haven't really shown like the adult version, but as far as I like, know. What, what I liked was was seeing we we got to see Lionel mm. Lionel Luthor. And who he, actually looks a lot like our classic depiction Lex, of Lex, Lex Luthor. Luthor, which is kind of cool. You yeah, know, I never really seen him because I'm used to the the Smallville version of Lionel. Yeah. That's the only other version of Lionel Luthor I know. I yeah. never saw Lionel in the comics or anything, so it's um, it's very interesting. Yeah, um, to see. So yeah, he looks like the classic Lex. Do you think Luthor. it's gonna be funny if we show like modern Lex in this, and it's he's gonna actually look closer to like. The classic Lionel, where it's just like got hair. And, um, not but I mean, they wouldn't because no. they did hint at him. He lost his hair, right? Right. In yeah. The well, prison scene. Yeah, it's it's all at, at this point. Lex Luthor is already in prison, so we're we're well past the early stages yeah. of him. But um, and it's just focusing now on his sister. Mm-hmm. And I like, like you said, I like that dynamic between. Um, it's now it's kind of that whole Smallville dynamic again, where and they even say it. 
they even bring it up. Oh, that like that, for a long time, time, Superman like was Lex's best friend. Yeah, how he Clark, believed in him no matter what. That Clark and Lex were best friends, just like they were in Smallville. Yeah, and I was like, oh, that's got the Smallville reference. I love it. Um, well, I mean, it's a reference of, a few other versions in the it, comics but, yeah. too, but but still, um, yeah, I, I really like that idea because I, I've always liked that part in the comics where just the irony of the best friend becoming the yeah, arch, I mean, it's, the arch enemy. You do you know. see it in a few other like fantasy like series as well, but it, it is when it's done well, it can be really interesting. Yeah. So, uh, you know, other than that, I mean, the rest of it, the Metallo uh, again, Metallo the, Steel doesn't look, really still, look that good as a no, character. He looks does like it? shit still. Um, and I like for like the CW shows, you tend to do pretty well about integrating like the prosthetics and the CGI, but there's something about that chest plate that still just looks really tacky. You can't man. get past it, can you? No, not really. Like it looks a. I don't even know if it looks better than the first time we saw it, to be honest. Nah, probably not. I don't think they really changed it, to be honest. Not really. Like, and it's weird because it just looks so silly because he has, like, his shirt, like, partially open. And yeah. he's got the glove on the one hand, and it's just... And I, he's just kind of... I don't like how he shoots his beam from his chest. Where he's just, like, pulls his arms back and is, like, just right. trying to, like, spread his chest as wide <laughs> as possible. <laughs> it's like... You could at least have made him a woman where he got to see some tits or something when he's doing it. Otherwise, it just, it, it looks well, weird. Well, I don't think you want to give him, like, prosthetic tits. I don't no, really no, think not that him. I'm talking about make Metallo a girl, not actually him. But, I don't know. I don't, know. I don't think that really would have added to it, to be honest. Uh, it just, yeah. I, like, don't get me wrong. Like, the chest beam looks stupid. Like, I, it makes sense in, like, other versions of it, and it... Honestly, it could have worked here. It just it still looks stupid. Yeah, I, I, and I'm the with funny you. thing is, like the entire time you're watching, is like you, you kind of have to imagine like the actor doing that without the special effects and thinking, I wonder if that actually looks worse. Oh, it has to look worse. <laughs> Completely like, worse. Is this? Here's my man tits. Ah, oh, no, it was just yeah. I, I, I don't nipple beams attack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I just like yeah okay I've had enough um, yeah I didn't really care for that part but I, I will give this episode a solid B just for the Luther lore alone oh yeah I mean you know? I even after going through the lore you still have like Lana's like relationship with her mother mm-hmm. and like how manipulative and like shitty a person she is yeah and it's like a great dynamic to keep building on and you also have the return of Hank Kenshaw as like cyborg Superman sort right. of thing. Which is still kind of weird, but it's yeah. kind of interesting. So, but I also uh, I, I kind of dug the whole thing. I liked it, and um, uh, uh, we also forgot to talk about. Um, so the uh, Supergirl and Monel kind of get together at the end. At the end, but they bring in Mister um, Mix It Mix Mix uh, Mix Mix, mix, mix Pixel whatever. He's if you remember, if anybody remembers watching the old Superman cartoons, he's the in the Superman cartoons he's a little 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 short guy. Yeah. I think he was voiced by Gilbert Godfrey, even. It was pretty close to so it. And not... um, he's just like this um, he's, he's this all powerful being, essentially. He's like a fifth dimensional being yes, that's like a magical dimension. user sort of thing. He's kind of magical. He's got godlike powers. Um, kind of a rumble steelskin thing in that, uh, yeah. like, you say his name backward to send him back to his own place. Right. Sends him but back it only works for X amount of time, or you can say his name backwards to summon him or some shit. He's just there to cause trouble. He's a troublemaker. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a fun, like, trickster god sort of character. Yeah, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to that in Supergirl, because I yeah. think that'll fit really well. Oh, yeah, I think it Stars. definitely will. Like, as much shit as I actually give, like, Metallo's design, I actually think he's a really good character to have in the series. Mm-hmm. Like, I think he fits in the universe really well here. Yeah. And I think Mr. Mixits or whatever right. however we're pronouncing that is actually really close to the same things like he's may not be the like the most interesting character you have in the universe but he fits into this like show really well. He's a really good choice for the show. At least I think he will. We we haven't seen we've only seen a little, oh, very little. Don't like but. like I said, I like Metallo like I think as a character he fits in really well. I think in terms of like how he's actually played out has been a little underwhelming. Yeah. But in theory he really is a good character for it. I agree. And I think we might see a similar thing here, or this could be a thing where, like, you can kind of play around with it more so it actually makes it more interesting. It's definitely going to be a transition in story arc because I think this is going to be not quite, well, pretty much a filler episode. Like, it might be continue, able... like, this love arc aspect a little bit, yeah, but I don't see, that's kind of boring anyway. I don't um, see him more than one art, one episode just because of yeah. his powers and, and everything. Yeah, no, like, you, you don't know. want to have that character for, like, 
a multi arc episode. No, not really. Like, don't wrong. I like the character. I think he's interesting, but it really is just you're setting that up to have a goofy episode. Yeah, he's the guy guy who comes in maybe once or twice a season. Yeah, yeah. Like, cause you, he doesn't. He's not. He's a villain in that he like causes trouble and mischief. But yeah, if we're being honest, it's like. He's chaotic neutral. Like, he's not really out to... He's like, not out to really, really hurt anyone. He'll kill somebody for the fun of it, but yeah. that's that's, that's like still a he, reason. Yeah, like, it, there's no real, like, overall no, long-term no, motivation. No, he's just he's just doing it for to get his own kicks. Yeah, he's, he's, he's doing it for the shits and giggles. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, uh, what, were, what would you give this episode? Uh, uh, I think this was a solid B. Solid B? Yeah, me too. Okay. All right, so I know you don't follow it, or you haven't followed it for a while, um, yeah. but I'll talk about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. just real briefly. Um, so far, the LDM, um, it's had a couple twists and turns. Um, we've really gotten into using this superior, who's this kind of like this mad Russian with a sub. Not really digging that guy too much. Wait, wait, like the superior, like... And that's in like the villainous organization. He is the head watchdog. So there's been this group. So you have the Inhumans, yeah. that came about, and these, and then there was this other group that developed because of the Inhumans called the Watchdogs. Okay, who are who hunt Inhumans. Okay, so they've been building up to this for a while. Okay, so they're like the anti mutant league in like kind of yeah, yes, very much so. Okay. They're like you know they're out for you know they're like human supremacists. Keep yeah yeah keep human. You know, human human beings, human, and yeah. all this shit. So, yeah, classical play on race relations and right. mutant form. Gotcha. So, eventually, um, the superior is the name of the head guy. That is a shitty name. Yeah, it is. It's kind of lame. And, it's kind of generic, isn't it? And even... I am and, the superior because I am your superior. And it's funny because in this last, this last episode, they put Coulson... Because he's been after Coulson. Okay. Uh, he was a... As he was a a Russian agent or Russian part of a Russian military unit that got executed because Coulson years ago in Shield when he was lower level in Shield mm-hmm. infiltrated them, stole this this item from them. Him and May did. Okay, what was and the his, item? Uh, they never did say. Okay, and it's it's a secret. They're hinting at it for later on in the series. Well, I, maybe I don't know. Anyway, so they they steal whatever this item is. And his whole unit, except for him, for some reason, is executed. And okay. he blames Coulson for it. Okay. So he, so even Coulson's like, yeah, I don't remember you. He's like, I've been on hundreds of missions. Because he finally confronts him one-on-one. Yeah. And, yeah, you're just another red shirt to me. Yeah. Um, you're just one of It's a very middle yeah. management response. <laughs> very much so. He's like... It's like it's almost like you don't even have a name tag. Who are you? <laughs> you don't even stand a chance. It was it was pretty funny, really. Yeah. Um, so it's that whole watchdog buildup has been very uneventful and very yeah. I, I haven't fun. really found Agents of Shield to be. It, it was kind of lackluster in the first season, and every little bits I catch of it doesn't really seem like it's advancing a really heavy arc too well. So they've been doing this these LDMs these yeah, life the, uh, life the life androids. model yeah androids anyway the androids so during this last confrontation Simmons and Fitz at the very end of the episode realize that they've replaced everybody with an android now okay except for them okay so now they have to uh, find a way that so the whole next episode is going to be about about them fighting these androids apparently okay these replacements right mm-hmm. so. Um, so that's an interesting twist, and what's also an interesting twist is is the first android that this doctor built is actually using the superior as a pawn in her own game. Yeah, to take over the world or whatever. Mm. So it's starting to, to get to it, slowly replace everyone with androids. With androids, I think that's her. Her. her it's her essentially plan. body snatchers. Kind of. Yeah. Okay. But I'm at least finding that, starting to find that entertaining. I'm starting they, to find... Uh, they pretty much abandoned the whole Ghost Rider thing? Yeah, for the for now. I oh. really wish they hadn't. I think they could have done a lot more. Yeah. Well, I mean, they kind of jump from thing to thing a little because bit. Because the, the only thing they kind of... And, uh, they, they take this... They have this book called The Dark Hold, which is okay. kind of like the ultimate book of knowledge. Okay. And it gives you whatever you want. Mm. And it best, you know, gives you crazy ideas and, mm. and mine and that's basically the only thing left from so is it one of those things like where ghost rider series 
you have knowledge, but it's more than your simple human brain can comprehend. So it just fries it and overriding. Well, it, it doesn't fry it, but it turns you into. It's like it becomes like um, the ring. Okay. In Lord of the Rings, it's it's so powerful it corrupts you. Okay. That's that's the whole premise behind mm. it. Um, so I I wish they'd go more with that. I'd like to see a little bit more of the dark hole, but we, mm. they've kind of gone away from that now, and now it's strictly on the the android. Okay. But I would yeah I, I kind of missed the, the the Ghost Rider because they kind of hinted like they were going to have two Ghost Riders. Yeah. And they briefly did. Yeah. And but they don't go instead of saying but that then that, like, that is Johnny. Was- Johnny Blaze, they don't. They never get to that part. Part. So after that, they're just like, and eh, let's go to this other arc. Right. And okay. they, they mid-season go to the LDM. So the rest of this season is going to be LDM. Oh, okay. So, um, I'm kind of starting to dig the android ever so slightly. Yeah. Just because we're starting to see that she's becoming... As time goes on, she becomes more and more self-aware. Yeah. Kind of the whole Skynet thing. Mm. And uh, she's... She's undermining everybody. Eventually, I think she'll undermine her creator, yeah. the Doctor. And, and then you reveal her plans, and right. that could be an interesting kind of transition. Kind of thing, yeah. So, okay. Uh, we'll see. So, it's it's okay. It's 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 maintained at least a B status. Occasionally, it drops a little bit, but right now, I'd say it's still a, a C. No, I'll say B minus to a B. Okay, fair so, enough. So. I know when I was watching it, the thing that really kept it was just kind of the character dynamics. Like I, Fitzsimmons were kind of a fun mm-hmm. like duo that were interesting oh, yeah. to watch. But I don't know. I, I I don't know if the story arcs were really all that great in the first season. So um, the first season was it was uh, they were trying to find their audience in their way, and then in order to stay on the air, I think they decided. Then they made a good play. They 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 merged it with the movie. And they yeah. introduced the Hydra element. I think but, the in- you know. issue with merging with the films was that it kind of knocked off the storyline that they were on, like, mid-season mm-hmm. pretty it well. Did. So It did, but it saved. The, I think it saved the show. Because okay. that second half of that season was really, really good. Fair enough. In the way they, they intertwined, not only they barely intertwined it with the movie, but the fact that they took that Hydra element mm. to such an extreme. Yeah. Um, that's what made that, that, that part of the season really good. Fair enough. And that's why I think they're still on the air. Although, we'll see after this season. They're not doing so well in the ratings right now. Um, there's a lot of shows that are on the air that aren't doing well in the ratings. But it's hard to say how much you can really vouch on that because the rating system is so much different now than it used to be. Yeah. Like, now you're going through DVR, online watching, online streaming, you know, pirating, mm-hmm. all that sort of stuff. So it's really hard to say what your actual audience bases it's true they you i'm not sure i'm sure they're figuring it out or that somebody has yeah you know as far as downloads and i'm sure mm. that's part of their equations now you know? yeah and when you watch it and how much you watch it maybe well yeah that i mean it's hard to say how much that's going to do whether that's a show they'll do better and rewatches like on netflix and things like that and to what extent that matters yeah like because there's probably shows that do watch much better in terms of like binge watching than they do in regular every oh, season sure. but sure. I don't know if they count that as being equivalent. And, I don't and really. They probably don't. I, it depends. I, I I don't know. I you know we, I haven't. I I have yet to have somebody explain to me how the because I know they've adjusted the Nielsen rating system, and I know they still send boxes out to these families. Yeah. You know, and I I actually got a letter once to do it myself, but I was in the middle of a divorce and I couldn't do it. Yeah. Um. But uh. But yeah. So. You know, I'm sure that's a big part of it. I'm sure they have to take the DVR into. You have to now. Yeah. You know? I mean, so. I mean, it's so standard now. Or, honestly, with online watching, it's kind of so well, standard now. Like you yeah. look at the number of people that cut cable, and it's an ever increasing number. And like I think it's almost what twelve, fifteen percent of the population, if not uh, more. I don't know if it's that high quite yet, but if they don't figure out a way to, um, to serve the cable cutter mentality and mm. provide um, more on demand, I think is where eventually yeah. it's going. Now where television may, it'll always exist in some shape or form, mm. but you're going to see like network television, kind of like they have with direct TV and, and cable. Or you now. have their on demand services. The on demand services on the side, they may start to merge that more, you know, make that greater and greater. Oh yeah. I mean, you know? and then I think if that's the case, you kind of have to take more, that has to be taken into account more with those sort of rating sure. systems, right? If, if yeah, and you know, if I were them, I would actually start creating 
more side content for their shows and for their fans. You actually do see that with certain programs. But, I mean, like, the stuff we're doing right now, Mm. I would take, I would find some people that, like, like, like what we do, pay them, put up a podcast or a video podcast and start Mm. talking about the episodes. Well, interesting enough, like, you look at AMC with, like, The Walking Dead and a few of their other shows, they more or less did do that. Like, they pretty much had Behind The Walking Dead or The Talking Dead or whatever. HBO had Game of Thrones this year. They had their own special show. Uh, You start seeing that more and more. If they start Uh, doing that more, I think that's going to create the super fan. That's how you get the fan engaged more. Well, I mean, it allows for, you know, that brand of fan that wants to just know everything. Precisely. Like, that's just super obsessive. It wants to, like, out-geek people. And, and that's 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 what you want, because that's going to be the fan that's going to watch any filler episode you put up. Yeah. And they may bitch about it, but they're still going to watch it, yeah. you know, and you want more of that, so. Yeah. But, but, I mean, you do also see a lot more, like, web content. You see, like, more behind-the-scenes stuff coming sure. out for shows online. Like, uh, you look at Marvel or Netflix, they both have, like, online, like, YouTube channels where they release, like, behind-the-scenes stuff or mm-hmm. trailers for upcoming things. And oh, So, yeah. yeah, it's definitely an expanding part of, like, the market, I think. I think so. I definitely think so. All right, so we will move on now to, uh, uh, just real briefly, Gotham is still on hiatus and will be, unfortunately, until April 24th. <laughs> uh, it's currently, uh, 24 Legacy is currently in its time slot. Uh, how, how are you liking Twenty Four Legacy? Have I you seen watched, it? Uh, I watched the episode because you were a fan of the original Twenty Four, right? Yeah, and I watched the first episode after the Super Bowl. It, eh, um, I actually enjoy uh, Keith Sutherland in um, his new show on ABC a hell of a lot more. Um, what is his new show? Oh, that's the uh, 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 the last president thing. Yeah, uh, or like uh, he was the last designated member of survivor. Yeah, yes, I enjoy that much more. I enjoy that and Blacklist incredibly. Um, oh yeah, you've been a been that's Blacklist fan for a while. Oh yeah, they're getting ready to do a spinoff next week called um, Blacklist. Uh, I'm not remorse, but Redemption. Blacklist Redemption. Right? Is that like an arc within Blacklist, or is that like an actual separate show? It's going to be a separate show. Oh okay. But they're you know they're going to will it, it like off. run coincide or I think so yeah at least at least you're going to have the spinoff episode Blacklist right before they premiere the first episode of. The Blacklist Redemption. So. Oh, okay, that's for our cool. listeners out there, uh, definitely set your DVRs if you can't watch it live. Yeah, so, I love that show though. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so uh, yeah, so Gotham is on hiatus. So that uh, we're not going to talk about Arrow because neither one of us really watch Arrow. Mr. Ankenbauer is our Arrow expert, so yeah. we will digress on that as well. So that pretty much takes care of the TV part of our podcast, and uh, so let's move right on in very quickly as we can here, as we've gone a little long on into uh, movie news. Um, so the first thing, and uh, the, we want to talk about the original script for the Batman, reportedly featured the Joker and several other villains. Um, well, we've heard a couple of these things already, like we had. Uh... Joe Manangelo, like, uh, supposedly had that little screenshot for Deathstroke. Mm-hmm. There was rumors that you were going to have both Joker and Harley Quinn being part of it to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. Uh, and even theories of them introducing, like, others characters since they weren't going to do the, um, what is it, the Gotham Sirens film, like, down the line? I didn't hear anything about that. So like, I'm that was sure. supposed to be a Gotham Sirens film. I think they had planned... For, I want to say, like, 2019, 2020, in that range, uh, that would be Harley Quinn's kind of spinoff film. Uh, yeah. It would be her, Ivy, and uh, Catwoman, supposedly. See, I, would have, I wouldn't have, I would have mind a Joker uh, Deathstroke team-up. Mm-hmm. And you, basically you have the the Joker being the maniacal mastermind, and you have... I don't know. Like, I, I, I'm not against having the Joker character. You just don't like Leto's version. I, I hate Leto's version of it. Like, I so much... But unfortunately... Like, I'd rather have the Batman version of it, where you just have, like, a big-footed Rastafarian Joker. I, it made no fucking sense, but it was better. The problem is, we're stuck with them unless they decide to completely recast yeah. the Joker at this point. Yeah. Um, so, I wouldn't have mind seeing the Joker as the mastermind, kind of being, obviously being crazy, but... And have Deathstroke do the the real the big yeah. fight scenes with Batman. I don't know. Or but, if you go like for like that sort of like there's multiple Jokers sort of scenario, you could have a Joker face off thing. That could be cool. What? And the new Joker kills off Leto. Yes, yes, <laughs> that I would be fine with. 
I think a lot of fans would be okay with that. I don't know if they could get Leto to come back though at this point. And yeah, I don't to, know. He was pretty pissed off about like how Suicide Squad turned out. Not only that, but let's let you know, it's not in the notes, but it just recently just broke that. Not only has Ben Affleck stepped away from directing... Yeah, he wants to walk away from the film as a whole. But they just got a director, like... Last week. Last week. And he just stepped down, yeah. apparently, like, yesterday. Yeah. From the project. So, I guess my question to you, Aaron, would be, how bad can it be if you keep if you bring if somebody in... If you're bringing, in, like... Three directors by the time you get there? Well, not only that, but that you brought in a director and that director immediately a week into the project <laughs> says, I'm done. Well, you know, I, I'm so out of here. That either. So there's a lot of rumors about the upcoming Batman film, about how the entire kind of DC WB universe is going forward. Because clearly someone in that party is freaking the fuck out about how shit's going, or they're trying to transition things on a dime, or something's. Just kind of funky. Um, so yeah, like either the script's really horrible, or there's just so much corporate control about like, no, well we want this and this, and we have to make sure we're marketing to this and this. Then like, you know, like there's so many notes on it, and like so like mm-hmm. just executive controlling from like the top down, like that it's just an unworkable environment, or like it's just that fucking bad. If it's that bad, that's if situation because like. Is if it's that toxic? Yeah, you know, if if Affleck is, yeah, he's still playing Batman, but he's still resentful because he's had to step away from being director because he's pissed off. I, I don't think he had to step with... away from director. He chose to step right, away but from director. Dude, he chose. Maybe like the it's a rumor protest, is that, though. The rumor is supposedly that he's trying to negotiate his way out. Mm. That he is trying to step away from his technical role as a producer and from his role as actually acting in it. Like, that is, like, supposedly, like, with his contract, he shouldn't be able to do it until after the Batman, mm-hmm. but supposedly that's where he's wanting to do, because he's kind of played the role, and I guess they pretty much are sh- more or less shot Justice League by now, and are kind of editing that, and uh, I guess he's not particularly happy with how that part one of that turned out. Yeah, I don't think too many of them are. It, it just... It seems like either there's a major direction shift going on in WB, mm. or like you said, the corporates are going crazy with their marketing, yeah, and trying to limit the creative. Side well, of I things. mean, even with the shows, they've had issues with that, like on Cartoon Network, where you look at something like the Green Lantern cartoon, which was fucking fantastic, and it didn't sell well enough to the audience they wanted to sell it to, and that's one of the main reasons it got cut. Mm. Um, and I don't know if that's going to extend in the movie universe, but. Yeah, I'm sure it's kind of trying to walk a thin line of we want to sell these toys and like the shit we want to sell, but we are clearly have to sell to an all cater to an also older demographic, and the balancing act there is very difficult. And it could be partially on WB's end. I mean, I think you look at the only series they've really had that kind of lasted like more than two or three films was Harry Potter. And that was clearly pretty easy to market. It catered to a younger audience, even though an older demographic could enjoy it. But like it knew where it its marketing was all kind of in order. It had it all kind of set up. Whereas this is kind of kind of targeting an older demographic, but it still clearly wants to sell to a younger demographic as well. And it's not necessarily finding the balancing act at once. Yeah. Uh, and then you have probably issues with just executive order and power and. Because, I mean, really, this universe was set up to be kind of... Snyder was meant to run this the same way um, the dude from Buffy. What is his name? Oh, you're talking oh, about uh, Josh Whedon. Whedon, like, set up the Marvel Universe. Yeah. Because you look at the first original films, like, up until, like, the original Avengers, Whedon kind of oversaw a lot of that direction, even though he didn't necessarily direct a lot of the films, like, the original Iron Man. Right. Um and I'm not sure if that's working out for them in the same way that I, they were thinking it would. I don't think WB is giving them. I think they 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 put their faith maybe in the the wrong people, mm. and now they're trying to take that power back. And there's a power struggle. Structure, struggle. Well, I mean, we've already seen DCs replace their head on who's mm-hmm. going to be kind of overseeing like the movie universe from their point of view, right? Um, and I forget the guy's name and what he's done. Like he's 
been a part of a few comics, but I can't recall. Well, he's in charge of DC Comics too now, apparently. But oh, I know it? you're talking about. I can't think of his name either. But it seems to me like they lack. They need that person. They need the um, what Marvel has. I can't think of his name either right now. Oh, Phage. Phage, yeah, they, Phage or whatever. Yeah, they Phage. need they need him. They need that kind of person. You know, Disney, well, clearly they tried to set a couple people up in that position, and to be honest, I'm not really sure how that worked out because I really keep hearing less and less about Snyder's role in this universe. Oh yeah, I think he's being phased out. Like, I'm surprised to be he's honest, still in charge of. With Justice the exception League. of knowing that he's the director on like the Justice League film, you hear nothing about him in any of the other films yeah. anymore. I just, uh, you know, it just seems like Disney understands that you have to let the creative team be the creative team, and then you mark well, it off of that. Kind of. What they did. I mean, yeah. there's clearly they they are going for a multi film universe. They have a lot of experience doing that at this point. Not only did you have kind of the Pixar team that got kind of reintroduced in the Disney universe, you have the experience with the Marvel films and then currently the Star Wars films going forward. Um, but you also had years of just doing just flat-out Disney films. True. Um, that, you know, don't worry, wrong, a lot of the sequels were hit or miss and they didn't necessarily do the multi thing, but with a lot of their big films, they really did kind of market it and kind of knew where their audience was and how mm-hmm. to direct it and... Like you, it's a corporate entity, sure, but it's talented at what it it's does. It's a talented creative. It, it understands the creativity side of things, I think. And I think WB put, like I said, I think they put their faith in. They tried to model what Disney did, but they they picked the wrong people. Well, that and I think in certain cases you might have gone with more inexperienced people for certain roles as well. Yeah, like you look at Whedon, like he's been directing for a long time, mm-hmm. like and he. You look at what they did in the Marvel Universe, it is much closer to the TV universe. So having someone that has a lot of experience working on shows actually kind of makes more sense than a basic film director. What, what, what they're doing, yeah, and time. Because, I mean, together. it's a serial. Like, don't get me wrong, there's gaps in between when things are shot, but you still are kind of... Telling one big story. Yeah. yeah. So I think having someone with more television experience there actually really played to Marvel, uh, or benefited Marvel pretty heavily. Got it. All right, so let's move on to the next piece of, uh, of news here. Uh, apparently they're saying uh, don't expect to see uh, Vincent. Uh, um, God, this is horrible. I'm we so really do with, horrible with Italian names. Uh, I do we? really bad with bad with Italian names. At um, least I assume it's Italian. I could be wrong. Kingpin. Let's just say don't expect to see Don't King, expect Fisk to yeah, come back. Don't expect to see Kingpin in Marvel's Netflix. That's the rumor Punisher, anyway. The Punisher series. Yeah. But that was actually rumored for Daredevil season two as well, mm-hmm. um, so that really could go either way. He could and be to be honest with a off. lot of even when we're talking about like the uh, DC stuff, it's a lot of it's just a rumor mill, and it's hard to say what's getting out. Whereas this, I this is clearly meant to be an intentional thing. It's like, hey, don't give up your expectations, but it might happen. I just think I don't see why you wouldn't. It was so dynamic um, to see those two characters together. Even it for, worked really well in season two of Daredevil. Yeah. yeah. That being said, if you want to take like a larger plot and you don't necessarily want to just have Punisher rampage throughout the city, like you actually want to have it being like dealing with his backstory, origins, or anything along those lines, it might not necessarily be the best character to introduce unless you want to have like one of his like henchmen as like a subplot sort of thing or right. have him as a subplot because it clearly wouldn't be like the main story arc for him. Hmm. I just think. It was so... I think they work very well together. Oh, yeah. And they play off of each other oh, very yeah. well. And to be honest, I'm not... I hope he does show up. Like, at least in a little cameo role or something. Right. Because Fisk is my favorite fucking villain out of, like, the Marvel TV shows. So I don't far, wrong. yeah. 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 I don't wrong. The dude that plays the Punisher, fucking fantastic. Yes. Uh, Tenant, who played the Purple Man, mm-hmm. fucking fantastic. Killgrave, yes. But... I still fucking remember that scene of Fist just fucking killing that dude by slamming his head <laughs> through the do- door. car door. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's fucking brutal. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And not only that, it was such a three dimensional character, man. Like, I would, oh, yeah. if you want to do like a Wilson or Wilson Fist like spin off show for that, <laughs> like, if you just want to have Kingpin just and Kingpin. like him, his rise to power and like his point of view of dealing with like various like well, super villain or superheroes, yeah. I'd be fine with that. Well, I love that character. I like the. I think the way they built him up because he's he's number one. He's vulnerable. Yeah. He's emotionally unstable and driven. You know what? You like, know. He's 
like a little unstable. Like he has emotional trauma. Yes, but he keeps his shit together for the most part. But when, but like you mess with his mama, or you really piss him off. Oh <laughs> yeah, you're gonna pay the ultimate price. That's oh yeah, the, he you know, will. He's he allows himself to be passionate at moments. He's like for very a very passionate. calm, collected person, most of the time. Right. Like. He has a very long fuse, but when he goes off, it's a very big bomb. Oh, yeah. It's huge, dude. You don't want me anywhere near that guy. Um, but at the same time, like, it's interesting because you look at, like, the Daredevil show, and you look at how he deals with the aftermath of those explosions, and it's pretty fucking efficient, like, yeah. for the most part. Well, yeah, I I, I love, I, I liked how they put, how they, how they went about putting Daredevil up against yeah. Fisk as well. It was a slow build. Oh, yeah. And, and it's... It, it was nice because it really showed the contrast between the characters mm-hmm. as well. Very much so. Um, and not just that, but like you actually have him with, like with the love interest in that story, and you have him in that like childhood scenes and yes, like with his father. Yeah, and you have a very turnaround. You look at have the wall. probably the most three dimensional villain yes. on television, but, or in actually any series. And you know, and I would say I would love to see that in a movie, but you know the. The one thing that I always have to stop and say to myself is the Netflix series, they have a 13 hour movie. Yeah. You know, they, the, the big, the big, oh yeah, no, I, I'd much that. rather see that as a Netflix series. Yeah. Like so. I, I love that format. But I love I, that going forward, but, but develop a character on Netflix and let him jump to the big screen. Wouldn't yeah. be opposed to it. Um, so yeah, uh, like if this came up as like one of the villains, like in an upcoming Spider-Man film, that'd be pretty awesome. I just don't see who else you would want to put uh, Punisher up against, though, because Punisher, Fisk is almost unreachable at times mm. with all the, the layers of henchmen and, yeah. and how he well, goes clearly, about with clearly, if you strategy. look at how they set up the last season of Daredevil, it seems like it's going to set up for dealing with, like, a lot of the military sort of origins of the character and, like, mm-hmm. how he was kind of set up for in I that could, situation. I could see them going up, but he's already killed the blacksmith, mm. which was, like, his former, you know... Handler, uh, handler, military leader, whatever. Um, so I, I don't know. It's I, if you're going to have the brutality of the Punisher, how can you not have the brutality of Kingpin? To, well, in my mind, it just you I can don't have see like what, pretty brutal characters. Like I don't know who else you put them against though. That you can do that same. Hmm. I don't know. Well, I mean, it's almost interesting. Do you want to put him up against like a character that's like him and who's just like a criminal version of a character who's very military tact wise, who's very interesting, very well, smart, or do you want to put him up against with someone who's almost fucking super powered? I don't think you want to put him up against somebody super powered. I think I like I want to put him up against Fisk because kind of like how Punisher says to Daredevil, "You're one bad day away from being me." Mm-hmm. Punisher's one bad day away from being Fisk. It, That's actually kind of funny because there is some truth to that. I think because. Yeah. You look at Fisk and his motivations for the most part, especially in season one, he actually does view himself as a good guy. Oh, like, yeah. he really does, he's... He wants to build the, he wants to he rebuild wants, Hell's Kitchen. He yeah, wants, he yeah. wants to make it a better place, and he's willing to do bad shit to get it done. Right. Because it's about the results, mm-hmm. not your motivations. Precisely. And to be honest, there's an argument for that. You look at lots of governments throughout the world... And that's the approach they take to it. Well, and then there's Punish. You know, Punisher is fairly similar. I mean, he's he's out to to kill anybody that. Granted, he takes the a more military, tactful. I'm going to sh- you know fulfill you full of lead and yeah. or make you bleed. But I, I just he has a his view of vengeance is very similar hmm. emotional wise to Fisk. I, I like I said, I just I mean. God, I want to see it again. I, I enjoyed it so much. I want to see it again. Yeah. You know? Well, I you just love that actor's portrayal of Punisher as well because oh, yeah. like it's so close to being fucking Taxi Driver. It's, it's like very, and it well, works yes. so fucking well yes. because of it. Yes, I, I totally agree with that. Great analysis, very much so. All right, um, so we're going to go into some trailers now that uh, kind of we had the Super Bowl recently a few weeks yeah. ago. Um, well, I think the first one up is the Iron Fist one, which was just kind of released by Netflix online, right? Um, so far, it, I don't know if I'm gonna, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure I'm gonna love it mm. because every time I say, I see some of these trailers, I go, I don't know about the main character. Yeah. It, it turns out to be fantastic. Yeah. I thought, 
I kind of have the same feeling about Iron Fist right now that I had about Jessica Jones. Yeah. At the beginning, before I saw any yeah. of it, you know. The interesting thing for me is like you look at like the teaser trailers and they're fucking fantastic. Mm-hmm. Like you're just focusing on the action, the fight scenes. It's super fucking cool. And the last trailer they put out, like it's a bit more drawn out. You see kind of the more character elements, and it's slow as fuck comparatively. Yes. Like you're just looking at it as like, oh, this is kind of dragging a little bit. Like it's just a fucking trailer. All right. all right, it looks all right, but it, I'm not really sure if it's going to get the character development or whether I'm actually going to like it on like a character level the same way I do with Jessica Jones or Daredevil. But all right, we'll, we'll see where this goes. I'm le- a little less excited from this trailer. And then like a few days later, they released like that Colleen Wing like yes. like in the cage fight, fight scene, cage and you're like, scene. oh yes, this is fucking fantastic. You, you know what I love about the the Marvel uh, Netflix series is is their fight scenes are realistic. The hero gets winded. Yeah, the hero is having trouble. Yeah, <laughs> he's not just well, kicking that, ass. Like, they're the taking some elements from like some other things. Like you look at the original season of Daredevil, and there's like that hallway fight scene. Oh yeah, and God. there's real parallels to like the original Old Boy, which did a very similar fight scene, and it really kind of draws some of the uh, choreography from that. But it really does have that kind of brutal, close, in you know. You can't, don't have movement, so yeah. you kind of have to take some of the shot sort of thing. Like, Precisely. you can't just jump back too far. And, like, it really does kind of give it, like, damage and grit and, like... Oh, sure. Like, it, some... Like you said, like, a realistic expectation of a fight scene. Like, you're not going to walk away not getting fucking no, hurt. No, and you see that with Colleen Wick. She she takes some hits. Oh, she, yeah. You know, she's... Like, she's, she's in the cage with, like, two, you know, fucking brutes and, like... Yeah. Yeah, like, she wins in the I, end, but... It, there are times a, you're not so sure she's gonna make it. I yeah. Mean, yeah. Honestly, and that's what makes it good. I mm-hmm. mean, that's... that. I don't want to see, like... Uh, like, lately with the action movies, it's, you know, the hero just goes through and just kicks everybody's ass. Yeah, and, or you have so prevalent gun scenes where it's just, like... Running right. in, shooting everything up, w- running out, right? Sort of thing. And they're 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 not even winded, you know, yeah. at the time. Yeah, but well, I mean, that's going to be the downside of some of the superhero genres as well, isn't it? It's like because they're, they're well, super yeah. powered, you're not going to have that expectation of them. Clearly, with someone like Iron Man, he's in a suit. It doesn't really require the same, you know, aerobic conditioning. Well, it could. I mean, I think if they wanted to, they could show it that way. Yeah. I don't know how well it would go over with the blockbuster movie audience. Yeah. Well, I. Um, it's one of those things, like, with the Netflix shows, you really do have the time to kind of show, like, the longer mm-hmm. thing. You have more of the emotional opportunity, so it kind of yeah. plays to it a bit more than it does to, you know, the blockbuster films. And the blockbuster films, those heroes are over the top. Yeah. These her- heroes are, these are like your neighborhood heroes in mm-hmm. a way, you know. They are they have powers, but yeah. they're not, like, you know, bigger yeah. than life. It's not quite, like kick-ass where they're just like kids in costumes trying to like beat the shit out of things no not like that. Uh, but... even though i do actually think those are pretty fucking cool movies <laughs> like if we're being honest first one's okay second one was like, eh. oh dude you could barely tell jim carrey's in that movie until you watch it again uh, anyway i uh, did you not like jim carrey's like no, sergeant character no no i didn't but we, <laughs> we we can talk about that. that's another podcast but um but yeah so it was pretty cool i like i said i I'm not so sure about about Iron Fist yet, but if it's, it's but I'm sure I'm gonna love it. Yeah, it, I've know. liked all of them so far. Right, like all of the Netflix like Marvel shows so far, I've kind of really enjoyed. Mm-hmm. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, we'll probably go into a little on where I think like you could have done a little better in the villains for Luke Cage, um, and clearly that show was done a little differently than some of the other ones. But overall, I still liked it, and I think I'm hoping that. This will be a little better, but we can see. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, if you're introducing Colleen Wing and you had, um, was it Misty Stone and Luke Cage that got introduced? Uh, so essentially, you yes. are introducing like the daughters of the dragon, like side characters as well. So that's kind of cool. Well, yeah, it was like, uh, uh, what is it, Jessica Jones? They introduce Hellcat, Patsy Walker, and yeah. Also, uh, they have think... you ever uh, read her the the more recent Patsy Walker Hellcat thing? No, it's actually a pretty fun comic. I haven't read that, but. Um, they also introduced, they think the, uh, the Will Simpson character, the cop is actually Nuke. Oh, is that who that's supposed to be? a version, a new version of Duke, like a, or Nuke of, uh, 
of, of yeah, kind of similar. Obviously, oh, I actually didn't know what that was. Like originally, I thought that's what they were going for, like a variant well, be- of Punisher sort because of thing. Of the, because of the way he's using those pills, is the same thing. That's the same thing Nuke uses. Oh, okay. Obviously, Nuke has like a tattoo of the United States face of the the the, the flag on his face, and they yeah. couldn't do that for Jessica Jones. You think they'll actually play, have him play a villain in the Punisher series? Yes, or or. Maybe actually, defenders, that would make sense. defenders, or maybe even Jessica Jones again. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, so I could definitely say that. So. Like, I think that'd be a good like character to kind of throw into the uh, oh, yeah. like Punisher it's series. Kind of like a Roy Raged. Yeah, because I mean, it's a very similar character if he's like yeah. kind of like doping out and just freaking out on people. So, yeah, it's like take this pill and you're you don't feel any pain. I think yeah. it's red. I you know they each there's red, white, and blue. So, oh, is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. So, um, that is actually kind of funny. Yeah. I hadn't noticed that bit. Yeah, I didn't really <laughs> realize it until because uh, I started writing the notes for we're gonna go through the Defenders series uh, here shortly, and I was I was like, oh yeah, I was like, oh, I didn't catch that. Yeah, no, I didn't catch that either. Yeah. That's actually a cool little thing. Yeah, so all these little Easter eggs are all throughout these, oh, these yeah. series too. So like, even if you like watch like the last Luke Cage series, there's a good bit sprinkled throughout the entire thing. But this time, I mean, I think with Iron Fist though, there's no way this is gonna be the most heavily heavily on the mythical side, so we've we yeah, dipped is, into it through Daredevil, but we're really going to well, go into it. Well, season two of Daredevil, yeah. yeah. But I think this is going to be to the Marvel TV universe kind of what Doctor Strange was for Marvel's film universe. Yes, I can like, see it that. Kinda, especially because the origin stories are so fucking similar. Yeah. <laughs> like, you essentially, this is a kind of a classic Marvel trope, or like kind of a classic trope of well, why kid travels the East, learns mythical well, powers thing. Well, like the latest... Well, not the latest version of Batman, but, you know, the Dark Knight trilogy is the same thing. He goes it, off. To, it didn't focus on as heavily, but, but yeah, yeah, it's there. It's there with the, whatever they're called, the League of Assassins. Assassins yeah. yeah. So, um, but yeah. So, I, I don't know. I've got I, I'm high excited expectations, for it. and we'll I don't see. Know. Like, I've actually enjoyed a lot of the Netflix shows that have come out. Like, there's even, like, some things that aren't in the Marvel universe I think have been pretty good. Like, uh, the Troll Hunter show was really good. That was a, uh, Del Toro sh- produced show. I mean, they had the Santa Clarita diet thing that just came out where you have Drew Barrymore playing a zombie. That's kind of amusing. We'll see. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I don't know. We'll see. Like I said, I, each one of these series has been so different. Um, you know, Daredevil has its own thing going on. Yeah, I mean, and- Daredevil was a very classical comic book show. And then you look at Jessica Jones and it's very it's much... Drama. Holy not shit. Not only drama, but it deals with more like the emotional pain aspects of oh, like yeah. their assailants. She has and... P- that Everybody in that show has PTSD almost, <laughs> it seems like. I mean... Oh, I mean, from what they're going through, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, you deal with abortion, drug use, drug abuse. Uh, there's some... Rape. Is, yeah. I mean, they, they rape, don't... Rape, murder, they don't pull, they don't uh, pull mind control. Of, yeah. yeah. It's just fucking Like, right you there. have a lady that's mind controlled into, you know... Spoiler: Killing her parents and yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, there's no way you're walking away from that, you know. Just well, <laughs> singing on sunshine. Well, she's raped and then she decides to abort the kid. That yeah, I mean, spoiler big time there, but still, I mean, in your face. Yeah. Shit. So, but um, I mean, that was such a darker show than you could have done like on ABC or. Oh, like, there's no way in hell you could have. You, I don't. You could have only gotten away with that on HBO or Showtime is the only other place you could have. Maybe away AMC. With that. Doubt like, it. AMC's allowed itself to go pretty dark in spots. I don't. Yeah, granted, they they have. Uh, I guess maybe because like, you look at Breaking Bad. Breaking, it had I was going to say Breaking Bad had its moments, but not Preacher like, had its moments. Just but, the first season, not not bad, but, but it had just, its moments. Jessica had didn't have just its moments. The but whole it worked because, series had was a moment. Yeah, but that yeah. show worked because of how emotionally. Well, just yeah, that's what they were going was for. Fucked up. That's exactly what they were going for. Um, but, but yeah, so, um, all right, so let's move on. Uh, next trailer was Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Um, this was actually really the second trailer mm. that kind of dropped. Uh, it wasn't quite as good as that first trailer. I don't know. I actually it think, was still enjoyable, though. I think this is on par with the first trailer for me. Really? Like, yeah. Like, I still love the soundtrack. I, you love, like kind of the Drax like straight man kind of comics like <laughs> taking things so seriously it's almost like it's a funny again well yeah like it, it works really well and just like like but, you kind of have that kind of introduction of, like all the characters are introducing the Guardians of the Galaxy and like don't worry I, I love the first trailer as well but this one does really well and it's like it makes me very excited for this film like 
Yeah, it's well, going to be a good year for like Marvel films. I think. I think so, and I think it's 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 worth bringing up. They did a test. Now, granted, we don't know who the test audience is, but they did a test audience, mm. and it scored a very rare one hundred. Yeah, and that apparently that doesn't happen very often, even yeah. with select test audiences. So I don't know. Like somebody usually finds something wrong. You know, if it gripe about. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because how different this is from all the other Marvel films, right? Mm-hmm. Like, not only do you have that kind of space, you know, oh, yeah. ship, like, team dynamic, you have how it actually incorporates music, how it incorporates humor a little differently. Like I said, I've said this before, and you guys kind of argue with me a little bit but in the past, whatever, but it is the closest thing to Star Wars, in my opinion, without being Star Wars. I don't know. Like it just it seems so different to me. It doesn't have the family drama, but no. it, but it I mean, does you, have. You are going to have Star Lord's dad kind of pop up with Kurt Russell, but, but it does have the humor. It does have the humor so much better in Guardians. It though. is. I'll grant it is better, but it's also very much more contemporary. Than, yeah. Okay. But, well, um, it doesn't use the classical music. It goes for like the more seventies, eighties right. stuff. But it 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 it, it, re, it, it does uh, depend on the music though. If you yeah, take that music I think that's very of, fair. You take that music out of Guardians, it's a completely different movie. Just like yeah, you, that's a fair statement, actually. Yeah. So, uh, it, to me, it's it's very similar. It, it kind of has that same recipe. Uh, granted, a more contemporary version. Yeah. Um, it, Just so, Thanos eventually is like, I am your father. No, no, that's going to be the guy who's a planet, but it's actually not a planet in yeah. this version. But anyway, we'll get to that's a spoiler, but anyway. Or potential spoiler, we don't know. It could, we could be wrong. That, could be totally that's the wrong. rumor, is that Star-Lord's so. father is a planet. So, yeah, obviously, it's one of the, the movies I'm looking forward to, the, yeah. you know, uh, right next yeah, to it, episode eight for me. It looks amazingly so. fucking good. Like, yeah. there's a lot of good stuff coming out this year, and that's that's a highlight, even from, like, all the stuff we have coming out this year. Oh, yeah, definitely. All right, so let's move on to uh, another Netflix series, uh, one that I binge-watched in eight hours straight. Uh, that would be Stranger Things. Yeah, uh, uh, I two. think a lot of people were taken by really? surprise by the original like I series. Was. I didn't think I'd like it that much. Like, I think it's one of those things that's interesting because it was one of those series Netflix just kind of dropped and yeah. then didn't really like advertise that heavily, and then it just spread through word of mouth. Word of mouth. It, it's I, I've said this before. It's uh, Goonies meets t- Tales of the Dark Side. Mm. Um, if uh, anybody knows what Tales of the Dark Side was, was this was a TV show back in the eighties as well, kind of dark. Yeah, I mean, it's it kind of like a plays Twilight with Zone kind of ET thing. ET and a lot of old classics. Sure, like yeah, Star Wars. Well. Even uh, it just has it for me. It has a nostalgia factor, um, and that's a big thing. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but it also but, like from someone who isn't really obsessed with the eighties, like from your my generation who yeah. was born kind of the end of it. Yeah, like the nostalgia factor is like an interesting little homage in that it gets like the scenery down real well. Mm-hmm. And it has all these kind of nods, the kind of classic stuff that even I can kind of enjoy. Um, like, you think you have, like, an Evil Dead poster at one point. And, yes. But, like, in terms of, like, storyboard writing and, like, how it actually, like, writes the entire series, like, it does it so phenomenally well. Like, it's very cohesive. It's very... It's not necessarily fast-paced, but it's at a fast enough pace to where you never really get too bored. Like, you're it's, drawn into it. It's just... It, it's... I don't want to say it's campy. It, but it kind of is. It's, At times, it it has. It's yeah. very much like an '80s movie. Yes, and I maybe that's why I like it so much. But it, it's not cheesy '80s. It's like I said, it's Goonies. It's that fun, yeah, fun it, stuff. You know, um, that fun, I mean, it has also like those fun homages to like D and D. Like it clearly is a thing that is. It's made out of love of like a lot of older like products. Yeah. Like it's clearly it loves all the things that it's making reference to. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Like in the, it, it shows. And this trailer, it looks like it looks like maybe that uh, they said the whole world is going upside down. So we're we're obviously returning back to the alternate dimension. Oh, the upside down. The upside yeah. down. Where that's like maybe one. merging with the world. Yeah, or like, like there's the two a whole worlds are trying to merge now. It looks that... kind of interesting. Yeah. Well, it's so. funny because you also have like uh, the characters having like a Ghostbusters yes, outfit. Yes, that's very cool. But the funny thing is, like, that's kind of part of the plot to one of the Ghostbusters films. Yeah, yeah. With the uh, painting. Yeah. Well, not, not even. Well, not only that, but if you go back to the uh, the original um, Ghostbusters, it's about a, a god trying to make its way into yeah. the human world or whatever. So 
It could be yeah. along those I lines mean, too. If you have like the bit with like the gatekeeper and like the right. dogs and things like that, yeah. yeah. I mean, that was essentially it. Was it was another universe trying to, to merge, merge or it. like enter our own universe? And it's funny, you like you have that kind of thing that seems to be there, and you also have a reference to Ghostbusters where that's kind of the plot line, right? So in that kind of goes hand in hand. I mean, last year not a lot of people picked up on it, but that D and D board was crucial to the, the whole series. I don't know. I, I feel like a good amount of people picked up on that because I mean, it, it it paralleled like the overall story. Like I picked up on the Shadow Universe, Shadow Verse, or whatever they called it, pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, not a lot of other people did. I don't. So I, cause I've talked to people at you know I know at work and stuff, mm-hmm. and they're like, oh, I didn't really pick up on that until. It was pretty much said to me, and I said, yeah. oh, no, it was right there when she did the board. Yeah. She turned it over, so, you know. And even the monster they used was pretty much the monster they were yeah. kind of confronted with. Well, I mean, or at the very least, it was symbolic of it. Right, yeah. exactly. So, um, but yeah. It, Though, admittedly, yeah. I think that show also did really well in terms of, like, the technical effects al- mixed along with the CGI. Mm-hmm. I think that was a good aspect for why it worked, too, because it really did allow it to capture that 80s feel pretty well. Yeah, very much so. All right, so let's move on to uh, a personal favorite. The the you and I both are dying to uh, see this year, and that would be yeah. The actually, Logan. the early reviews are coming out for this already, and I'm refusing to watch them until I actually yeah, see this. Yeah, I, I saw one today pop up on my phone. I'm like, nope. Yeah, it's not, like no. I, I want to know how this goes. Like, I don't care if like splits getting better reviews or whatever. I I didn't have expectations for that. The problem is though, the fact that they're already putting the reviews out there usually means that it's pretty good. Usually. Or pretty bad. Or pretty it could bad. Go it could be, but usually... Or they just had advanced screening and it's like, yay. I need to talk about this now. Yeah. Um, um, I don't know. Like, It's interesting because this is going to be an early March release. But at the same time, like last year we had Deadpool kind of in a similar spot with late February. <laughs> but that was so well advertised. And it's not that this is poorly advertised. Clearly, I am ex- amazingly excited by it. Sure. But I'm not sure if it's going to get to that same status as Deadpool did last year. I don't know. This trailer wasn't as good as... And it was because they tried to use Amazing Grace, like an alternate version. The funny thing about Um, that is it's not necessarily bad. It's just you're following that up by... (laughs) You're following Johnny Cash's Hurt. Right. Which, don't get me wrong, it's originally written by, like... um, Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails, which did the original version of the song, which was really good. Mm -hmm. But as far as I'm concerned, that's Johnny Cash's fucking swan song, man. It could be. Well, for our generation, yeah. No, like, that's like like the song that actually did really well off, like, one of his last few albums. Oh, okay, you mean, like, okay, last great song. Okay, Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, that's his his last hit. Yes, yes, I agree. Like, that's the song he was going out on. Although, I will... Yeah. Uh, I don't I, wrong. There's some songs you can maybe argue are just as good. Off that same album, but yeah. Or, um, like, in, just out of his entire catalog, there's some songs that are just as good, maybe. Yeah. Like, Folsom City Blues is good. Like, there's lots of songs that are really nice, but that is the song that has the most emotion to it. Mm-hmm. Like, you hear the frailty of his voice, and it adds to it. Sure, it's... It, it's Patrick Stewart is dying. I mean, let, let's just... Oh, no, I was just talking about the Johnny Cash Oh, Johnny Cash, yeah, but it goes well with with Patrick Stewart, a very frail Oh, yeah, like, it it seems like it parallels some aspects of the movie and for Mm -hmm. why that song works and why I hope this film works. I'm hoping that it's not just a a marketing play. I don't think it is, though, but we'll see. Like, every bit of the trailer makes it look like this is kind of what you wanted the previous Wolverine films to be, almost. Like, I'm not... the, The other ones were fine, but you look at this film coming up, and it's, it looks spectacular. Like, it has emotional depth. It has, like, that tension. You don't... Mm-hmm. Wolverine's not going to regenerate from, like, a few drops of blood <laughs> sort no. of thing. No, not in this one. He's um, he's facing his mortality for the first time in his life. Yeah. Honestly. Um, since he's been... Well, really, ever, I guess, yeah. with his mutation. Um, but, yeah, it, it, it... So, yeah... Well, I think that we've probably said all we can say there. Um, yeah, like, it, it just looks fucking fantastic, even though I don't know if, you know, Amazing Grace is the best song to pair with. It just didn't work as well as Johnny Cash's Hurt. Um, and there was the, what was the other one they did for the other trailer? Like, it wasn't Hurt, but uh, it also worked pretty well. Uh, I think I saw one where they used the other Johnny Cash song, the um, Sooner or Later. Um, oh, God's you Gonna could, Cut You Down? Yeah, I think they, I think I saw one with that. Uh, I didn't see that. I don't one. Know. Um, but yeah, uh, so let's move on. Um, one thing that was absent at the Super Bowl, 
No DCU trailers. Well, I mean, essentially, they've already shown off the Wonder Woman trailer. Uh, and you kind of are starting to hear leaks about that film as well um, that are saying it's not what DC wanted it to be. So it's going to be interesting to see how if that has the same chalkiness as some of the other films. And I think we've pretty much talked about it already, but I, I think it alludes back to there's a change in direction. Yeah. Um, um, Flash has been pushed back. Uh, Aquaman's being rewritten last I heard. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it can go either way, but it's... But I thought at least we'd see a Wonder Woman trailer because... Well, or at I, least re-show it. Yeah, we didn't well, get it that. could just be one of the things that DC just didn't feel like marketing it at the Super Bowl. They could already be. released it. There's, you know, that extra cost of showing it there when it's already out in the public. But I think... I'm be more surprised they actually didn't hint at it like a Justice League trailer or at least a teaser trailer There's for teas- that. Yeah, like they did, or at least reshow as you showed at the what was it Comic Con last year? Or yeah, something. Um, yeah, because like, that'd be the next big film I think they'd just, be hinting at, and like it just kind of sends up another red flag to me. Maybe I, I don't know. I don't know. know. Uh, with the entire DC thing at the moment, it's all kind of up in the rumor mill, so it's really ha- kind of hard to decipher what's you need kind of take with a grain of salt and what's like I, probably I more know. legitimate. I know, I just, all we see lately is very negative news on DC, and I shouldn't Kinda. be so hard on DC. Don't get me wrong, T- DC TV is on fire um, yeah. for the most part, but DC movies, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, know. I mean, even the comics have kind of had some negative press in the last few years. I mean, one of the reasons you have the rebirth event is because of how poorly the new 52 was kind of received in some ways. Yeah. Um, but, even that, like, I think there were some gems in that as well, so it's not... Well, they might draw from it, maybe. I yeah. don't know. We'll, well the see. funny thing is, you actually look at uh, Gotham, and it has. Like, the whole Joker's, like, face, face being cut off and stapled back on. I that, really like that, actually. I the really funny really thing like is, that. that that comes from the New 52 version of the Joker. Hmm. And that's where that draws that from. I really did that... I thought that worked really well for Joker. I really for did. that show, yeah, yeah. Weirdly, yeah. or Joker. Period. But yeah, it doesn't work that well in the comics, but there it works really well. Yeah, it does. And it's funny because it also draws on the Court of Owls storylines, which was one of the first major arcs after the New Fifty Two reboot for Batman. So yeah, and I think that's actually a really fascinating story as well. Yeah, we'll see what they do with it uh, when they come back in April. Yeah. So. All right, so that uh, pretty much wraps things up for us this week here on Marvel DC Kings. Um, We've got a big announcement to make as far as where can you find four Midwest guys. I am happy to announce that there is now, uh, drum roll please, four MidwestGuys.com has arrived. Uh, it is a blog site, but on there is uh, starting with all of our podcasts that we've ever done that we posted to YouTube. That's where I decided to start from. I've archived all the way back, which is basically years worth of podcasts on there and they are categorized as well Hmm. so if you just want to see listen to all marvel dc kings you there's a link at the top you click that and it brings up every marvel dc king we've ever done yeah if you just want to listen to our star wars rebels you click the link boom there is all star wars rebels ever Hmm. that we've done for the last year or so and if you just want to see like say your star wars special for like rogue one rogue one it's there under uh, specials actually actually, but I, I can make an actual Star Wars category too, which I might. But either way, or you can look at them chronologically and they mm-hmm. are all posted on there. Um, right. So does that link to the Podbean link or it, the it, YouTube link of it? It does all all of our links. off. Once If you go to 4 off to the side you will see a category that says uh, subscribe, uh, like, and share. Uh, or share, like, and, share, like, and subscribe. And under there is our link to Podbean. It's the link to our YouTube. It's the link to our Facebook. It's the link to our Twitter account. It's a link uh, to our RSS feed for just the audio. Like I said, everything you so need. So if you have an interest in subscribing, liking, commenting, this is kind of the main this, hub to this is check your out hub. anything This we is do. your one-stop shop. No longer have to go to Google. Just type in the number four, MidwestGuys.com. That is the place to go. So make sure you check that out and make sure uh, you can also uh, contact us through there. Uh, there is, if you hit contact us, there's actually a little form that comes up. You can type a message to us directly and it'll send us right to our email address. So you can reach out to us. You can comment on each, each individual podcast through the website because the website is a blog. 
So if you want to leave a comment about that, you can leave it there as well. Plenty of ways. This is your one-stop shop. This is the place to be. This is where you want to be. This is everything in one place for you for the number four Midwest guy for the number four MidwestGuys.com all together. And then, uh, but please reach out to us. We'd really like to hear from you. So, uh, Aaron, thanks for joining us, my friend. Yeah, not a problem. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And for B. Willie saying, we will catch you next time. <laughs>